In today's video, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know when buying or selling the LEGO Mindstorms RCX. As a seller, knowing these things can prevent a possible return or refund, and as a buyer, it can help you to know what to look for in a listing so you don't get burned, and also how to test your unit once it arrives. While there are many internal revisions of the RCX, there are three versions that are externally identifiable. The 1.0 version with the external power jack, the 1.0 version without the power jack, and the 2.0 version which was never released with the power jack. The main difference I'm aware of is that the 2.0 version can talk to the Spybotics line of Mindstorm's products. If you are a seller and don't wish to take any steps to test these, simply list them as untested or as is. Even if they look just like new on the outside, that doesn't say anything about the functionality of the unit. If it is completely untested, it should be priced as such. As a baseline test, I would expect any seller to 1. Check if there is any corrosion in the battery compartment. This is very common, especially with older electronics, and these are getting to be about 25 years old. And 2. Test if the unit powers on after installing the batteries. If this is as far as you would like to go, you should list it as clean battery compartment, powers on, no further testing. If you want to further test your RCX and give your buyer some confidence, you can follow these steps. If the RCX has an external power jack, try powering the unit without batteries installed, using a 9 to 12 volt AC transformer, such as the ones sold with LEGO products, like the 9 volt train speed regulator. I'll go into more detail on why I like to use these specifically. Next, I would recommend downloading a firmware to the unit and test the IR communication. If you have a PC with 32-bit version of Windows, you should be able to use the official software in the USB tower. I know most people aren't like me with a dedicated Windows 98 PC set up at their desk, so I'll give an alternative method for newer PCs with the 64-bit operating systems. You'll need the serial version of the IR tower, a USB to serial adapter if your PC doesn't have an onboard port, and third-party software such as BrickX Command Center. I'll link these in the description below. When you first start the software, you'll need to select the COM port your tower is connected to. You can check in Device Manager under Ports to see the COM port number. Also be sure the brick type is set to RCX. Once the software is open, go to Tools and then Download Firmware. The latest official firmware is version 0332. This should take about five minutes. The screen will count up from zero until the download is complete. The unit may start a block over if there is an issue. Fluorescent lighting is notorious for causing issues with IR communication. The lights I use when filming are a great example of this, while the LED lights in this room don't have that effect. Once the firmware has been downloaded, you can test all four of the buttons since this is also a common issue. Note, the view button won't have any effect if you don't have a firmware downloaded. I usually take a few extra steps for any units I sell, such as testing each input in active and passive mode, as well as each output. I've never encountered any units with non-functional ports, but it only takes a few minutes to be sure. I'll link a recent video on how to do this in the description. For the rest of the video, I'll give a few examples of intermittent issues I've found with RCX units over the years. All right, so there's a few other things uh, I've noticed with some of these, and these are the units I'm not selling because they have some kind of strange issue. You can hardly see here, it's easier to see when it's disassembled, but there's along the bottom and along the top, it's got some um, some kind of issue with the LCD. I don't know if that's going to get worse over time. So that's why this is one I'm holding on to. This is one that has trouble with IR communication. That's why I stuck this piece on there. Uh, whenever, it, even without the fluorescent lights or anything like that that I know causes issues, this one will just start going through the same block over and over and you know you go 0 to 20 and then 20 to 40 and then back to 20 to 40 and over and over but it'll eventually download the firmware it just takes a lot longer and it's just a little more intermittent than any other RCX I've had and I've had this one for many years um, so maybe this is one I can repair later on I haven't really gotten that far with it but maybe one day 
This is another strange one, and not to worry, we're, we're still flying half a ship. Um, <laughs> now, this one should power up just fine with a 12 volt AC input. And you may have heard that little tick, it's getting power. Here. And that's all it does. Now what's funny about this unit is so this is a about a 13 volt AC input um, from my bench power supply. Let's try it with the official Lego 12 volt AC, which is closer to about 12.6 I think, um, without a load. So it does the same click, but then it eventually starts up, <laughs> which is kind of strange. Um, so my initial theory was maybe something with the um, the bridge rectifier which is this guy right here but because that's what's strange it actually I used a 12 volt DC and it did power up so now I'm kind of thinking maybe maybe these capacitors need to be replaced um, like I said there's several different versions um, one of the older versions has a ton of uh, there's like six or seven capacitors down here and they're all Nishikon they're I think that's how you say it um, they're good Japanese capacitors but they're 25 years old so they're probably getting near the end of their life so some of these I'm gonna end up recapping just for myself I probably won't sell any but I don't know as time goes on and these things get harder to find and are having more issues maybe I will start getting a little more into refurbishing the actual board um, for any that I sell so that's pretty much it for this video. I have another guide that kind of goes through reconditioning, cleaning the, the battery acid out of them. I gotta do this guy next. This one just came in the mail the other day. Um, cleaning the buttons while you've got it all disassembled, um, that kind of thing. So if you wanna check that out, I'll link that below as well. Why on earth are there fireworks tonight? Oh my god.